Hi Geminis, how are you fellow air signs? Welcome to your reading for January 2018. It's late, I know, better late than never. Um, so let's get into it. Let's see what's going on. So we got Saturn moving out of your seventh house. That must feel good. That must feel good. I can't imagine. <laughs> um, I can't imagine. I just experienced the Cancer full moon in my seventh house, and that was enough. I was like, I'm done. That's enough. Um, so let's see what's going on with you all. Gemini's, Gemini's, Gemini's. It's very hard for me to stay upset with a Gemini for too long. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I really do... Okay, so here is the Magician, first card out, along with the Three of Pentacles. So, I feel like some of you might be building a house, or like there's some kind of actual physical structure that you are putting together. There's some kind of, it's, there's some kind of foundation, there's some kind of blueprint that's being created, um that you're sort of in charge of. Like, this is your project. This is what you are trying to do. But I get the sense that some of you are building and you're hard at work and you're really focused. Yeah. Like, I've kind of been wondering, like, where are all the Geminis at lately? Like, I haven't, like, I haven't seen, because, like, y'all are working. Okay, I get it. Y'all have been working. Y'all have been trying to get some work done, make some stuff happen. There could also be some stuff happening on the psychic, psychological, maybe even emotional plane that just feels very intense. This is the tower. And the deck that I use is called the Ghetto Tarot, and it's a photographic reinterpretation of the Rider Waite, and it was made in Haiti. And it's all Haitian artists. All, all the props were even made by Haitian artists, all Haitian actors. Um, it's a great deck. I love it, and I'm going to keep using it. Um, I love the imagery of it. But yeah, so we have the Magician, Three of Pentacles, High Priestess, and the Tower. So, and Taurus, and it wasn't Taurus, it was Sagittarius. Of course, your sister sign, right, your opposing sign, also got a lot of cards about rebuilding and building. And I feel like with the High Priestess here, this is also kind of occurring for you more so on a spiritual level than it is on a physical level. It's, some of you are definitely building external structures, building things up externally. We have the Seven of Pentacles here. But I feel like this is also representative of taking stock, right? Of what's kind of been happening internally for a lot of you. And quite possibly, let's see. Right, and I feel like for Geminis, in the thick of it all, when Saturn was in your seventh house, I have a lot of Gemini homies, Gemini friends, relationships were a big issue in terms of what are the foundations that I set in my relationships, right? What are the foundations that I create? How do I actually really take the time to get to know somebody, do I even really know what I want in a relationship? And I feel like there was a lot of calling in of these situations that just kind of blew the fuck up right before your eyes, right? Like there were these situations that came in, very spiritual unions, right? Very spiritually connected unions, but they were meant to kind of prune you and prep you and prime you. For the lessons that you needed to learn as Saturn was transiting your seventh house. So let's see what's go what else is going on. Right? Seven of Pentacles, seventh house. Really observing what I what I what I create, what I generate, what I manifest in my seventh house. Really being mindful of that. Let's see what else is coming up for Gemini's for January 2018. Hmm. 
Gemini, January 2018. Hmm. Nothing else is really... Oh, Taurus, right as I say that. Alright, let's stop there and let's see what else is going to come up as we do the reading. Some of you might be dealing with a Cancer. High Priestess card for me is a Cancer card. Some of you might be dealing with a High Priestess, someone who is very emotionally intuitive, who might appear to be passive, but is powerful nonetheless. And who kind of sits in between, right? These two binaries, the dark and the light. She looks to find balance in between these two extremes. She looks to break down paradigm, these paradigm shifts, right? She, she wants to be a part of these huge paradigm shifts where we're breaking down these dichotomies of either or, black or white, male, female, right? She wants to break that down. And I feel like for a lot of you, whatever dichotomy or paradigm or pattern whatever extreme that you've been sort of swaying back and forth in in your relationships is being broken down, right? That because Gemini being the twin, right, being the twins, having twin A, twin B, and they both want almost the exact opposite, right? They almost want two very different things. They have two very different personalities. One is light, one is dark, right? Right? One is water, one is earth. Like it, all of these opposing, like having these two opposing sides of self that live within you and your archetype, right? That there is this sort of, that that in and of itself can sometimes get in the way. But that sometimes being stuck in that binary, being stuck in that paradigm, being stuck in that either or black or white way of seeing things kind of keeps you from seeing anything clearly. And it kind of keeps you in a space of being held in bondage by your own constitution, so to speak. And that there is some kind of force, there is some kind of energy that is asking you to really allow these two parts of yourself to experience some kind of merging or to experience some kind of togetherness, right? So that you can stop feeling so torn about things. One twin wants to fall in love, the other one wants to completely reject it, right? And so there is this sense that the tower is here next to the high priestess. So there is some kind of event that's happening, I feel like, internally, in an internal basis. It's a very quiet happening. And it almost kind of makes it worse, right? Because when you go through energy like this, you just want to scream. You just want to be able to scream and shout and yell and kick and scream through it. But what's happening is almost kind of like, like I'm seeing somebody who's sitting there kind of in a catatonic state, right? Someone who is definitely experiencing a very intense internal trauma or a very intense internal occurrence or event, but it's like on the outside, the external, it's very kind of quiet and you can't say anything. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like, I feel like a lot of you are kind of enduring a quiet sort of transformation. Right? The Three of Pentacles, even for me, kind of represents kind of this underground, has this very underground feel to it. Especially if you look at the image on the original Rider Waite deck, where they're basically kind of in this dark, sort of, you know, cathedral, dungeon kind of situation, right? So it kind of speaks to 
the foundations and the work that is built when no one's looking or that no one gets to see. That we're always works in progress, every single one of us. There's always work that is being done internally and we just can't see it. We just can't see it. Hmm. Let's clarify this tower. Can you clarify the tower? I want to know what this tower is about for you all. Can you clarify this tower? Can you clarify the tower? So maybe some of you had been or are dealing with a fire sign, right? And things between you and, the, like, it's almost as if you know internally, you know intuitively that things with this person, like, either this relationship is going to be incredibly transformative for you or you know that it doesn't have the solid foundation that you need. Like, it's almost as if, like, this king of brooms might even represent this magician. And they've talked a good game at sort of convinced... Because sometimes a magician can represent a trickster, right? Someone who makes things appear to be what they really are not, right? And quite possibly this king of brooms in conjunction with this magician energy could, have repre could represent somebody who has talked you into believing, right? And see how he's even pointing right here? He's pointing to this card, right? He's pointing to this three of pentacles. He's, he's creating this illusion that there is some kind of foundation being built here. But intuitively, it's like, you know, like, no, this person is kind of full of shit. Or it definitely can be a relationship that has the potential to be very transformative. Like, like the tower in relationship readings is not always a bad thing. Because sometimes because we need the tower, we need to experience these abrupt changes. We need to experience these very harsh um, these very harsh purges, right, in order for us to get set right. Because humans, we're so willful. We're so willful. We don't want to listen to spirit. We don't want to listen to God. We don't want to listen to our highest selves even. We want what we want what we want because we're in these bodies. And so sometimes we need this tower energy to come and shake us out of our present desires and present needs so that we can actually move on to what's better for us. But something about this Eight of Swords tells me that some of you are still kind of, there's some resistance. There's some kind of resistance, right? There's some kind of resistance. Let's clarify this page of swords here. Can you clarify the page of swords? Clarify that page of swords. The Hierophant. So I feel like some of you are really communicating what it is that you want and what it is that you need to feel stable in a relationship. Or there are new ideas coming forth about relationships in a normative sense, right? Like, what, what is... What is socially acceptable for you in a relationship? What is it that what is it that you need to feel secure? Some of you might really be thinking about, you know, I might be some, being an air sign, right? But you might be somebody who needs to do things a bit differently when it comes to relationships. That this hierophant actually holds you in bondage and feeling like you have to follow a certain set of code that is not right for you. It's not right for you. And this king of brooms might just be somebody who's all about sort of respecting that code, that social code. And you kind of just want to destroy it. Anything, I want to see what can go here. Anything else for Gemini, January 2018? 
Well, that's a lot. Yeah. So you have the moon here. Entering into the unknown. Facing the shadow part of yourself. And quite possibly the recognition that maybe there is some fear, right? I feel like there is some fear about being a match for this person, being the queen of brooms. For this king of brooms, right? That when I see two suits or two court cards of the same suit, I think, okay, there's a potential match here. But now it's kind of also being clarified by the nine of brooms, the nine of wands. They're called brooms in this deck. So there's also some kind of apprehension or fear regarding this energy, regarding stepping into this union with this person, that there's something doesn't feel quite right. Right? The moon, when we think of the moon, it's like we know that something is there, but we can't quite see it. We know that something is hidden, but we can't, we can't quite find it. But that's what's sort of happening here. What advice, what guidance, other guidance or advice do we have for Gemini? For January 2018, especially regarding this moon. What other guidance do we have for Gemini? Any last guidance for Gemini? Okay. The lovers, the world, and the star. So yeah, this is really about you with the lovers here. This is a synergizing of energies, right? Think of this as twin A, twin B, right? You have these two twins, like you. Two halves of a whole. Two paradigms, two binaries, right? Two black and whites. But the lovers is really about the synergizing of that energy and the ability to really balance out the masculine and the feminine. The ability to balance out any two energies that feel very opposite and opposing, right? The ability to really reconcile these two very different parts of yourself. This ability to really step into feeling whole with the world, feeling complete, instead of feeling as though you are two separate parts at all times. And that being in that energy keeps you from wanting to merge, right? Keeps you from wanting to... Like, it's like this is what kind of is keeping these two energies apart. But these energies really work very well together, right? It's a match. But as long as you feel mismatched within yourself, you're not really ever going to feel like anybody is a good match for you. And until it is, the, and until you can figure out how to reconcile and feel whole within yourself, you know, your hopes and dreams... This could be an Aquarius, right? An Aquarius could be a great match for you. Maybe you know it, right? Maybe this page of machetes is that Aquarius energy, that air sign energy that I'm picking up on here. But you know that you could have something very long lasting and stable with this person and you're really thinking about it, but it's like you're getting in your own way. So you have this Aquarius energy here. Also, this represents hopes and dreams and things being able to really manifest for you in the future. Healing energy. Right? The 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 patching, the healing of these two ener these two dichotomies within you coming together and being able to kind of come together as a whole. I see really beautiful things for you guys in the future. 
So let's see what else is, what's, what's the outcome for January of 2018 for Gemini's? Outcome for Gemini's. Ten of Cups, the Devil, and the Ten of Swords. Yeah, so... Again, these two dichotomies. Computer wants to sleep. These two polar opposites. Two polar opposites. That on the one hand, we have emotional fulfillment. On the other hand, we have emotional grief and anguish, right? And in the middle is the devil. Right? The devil represents facing that shadow part of ourselves. Facing that part of us that sabotages our that sabotages us all the time. This is good. This is it means an end of a cycle and an end of an end of energy being drained. And I do feel that in the in the near future there is going to be some kind of emotional abundance, but it's not going to come without having to face some shadow parts of ourselves and how we've also allowed our energy to be drained and what parts of us need to be killed off and, and cut off and, and removed to the side. It's kind of an open-ended outcome. I'm excited to see what happens for you guys in February. Well, anyway, that's your reading for January. Sorry that it's late again, and I will see you all in February for Aquarius season. All right.